Did you know that some of the more devastating phishing campaigns are being driven by very powerful cloud-based artificial intelligence driven supercomputers? We're going to take a deep dive into what phishing looks like traditionally, then examine the power behind the modern and highly successful campaigns we deal with today. Phishing attacks are becoming so common that if you're not aware of how they work, you'll probably fall victim to one yourself. The best way to see what's involved in a phishing attack is to take a look from concept to execution. In this demonstration, you'll see how easy it is to pull off a good phishing attack, and then afterwards, we'll look at what's being done to take the effectiveness of phishing to the next level. So what I'm doing here is just simply setting up something called the Social Engineer's Toolkit. Uh, we go right into it, and this really automates and makes the process of creating a phishing attack very easy. So I'm going to select item one here, which is just a social engineering attack. I'm going to go with two website attack vectors. And then I'm going to go with three credential harvester attack method. All right. So now the next part, we will use Twitter here as our example of who we're going to try to clone. So I will go ahead and use site cloner. And the IP address that I want my connection to come back to, that's going to be this machine's IP, which is indeed 251. And then it says, who do you want to clone? I'm going to make that be Twitter. And what just happened as the tool actually went out to the real Twitter, copied down the Twitter homepage. And now we're going to actually feed this to a victim as if they got a new Twitter message or something like that to get them to click on the link. So what happens as a result, I'm going to go into my Gmail account here and send out the phishing email. So I'm going to compose this. Today we're going to be phishing uh, Bob Vance at Vance Refrigeration here. So we're going to do Vance Refrigeration at the office at gmail.com. I'm just going to say new Twitter message. And then I can say something like, did you see what is being posted about you on Twitter? So I sent him that message and then check this out. Now we can, I'm going to make this link visible so you can see what it actually points to. But in there, I'm just going to put a link to this machine. Now we could mask this and put in, um, you know, make it just say twitter.com, but I actually want you to see what the link looks like. So we go ahead and send that message as is. All right, so now we're gonna go play the victim. And remember, we got our attack still waiting here. So we go over to the victim machine. Victim goes and opens their Gmail. In this case, it's Bob Vance. So Bob Vance logs into his Gmail account. He sees a new message here. He opens it. He goes to check to see what people are write, writing about him on Twitter. He gets there. He realizes, oh, yeah, I need to log in. So Bob logs into his Twitter account. He clicks log in. And then as a result of him putting that email and password in and logging in, what we see on the attacker side, if we go back, is the attacker has now captured Bob Vance's login and his password. That was easy, but this method is hard to scale and recycle. Sure, we could blast it out to 100,000 people, but what about handling 100,000 responses instantly and instantly learning from all those responses what type of user clicked on the link the most and how effective it is? What if we could read those 100,000 responses in real time and within a millisecond build another attack 
based on feedback and refish everyone using that intelligence. Then repeat this over and over, getting a higher percentage of bait takers with each relaunch. This is where machine learning comes in. APT groups are now using machine learning algorithms combined with massive computing power to run these extremely effective campaigns. This is made possible by cloud computing service models. First, they build the training models that will be trained based on feedback from phishing attempts. Next, they start phishing. Once the responses come back, all of this data is fed into cloud servers that are designed to handle massive amounts of data efficiently. We're talking a thousand machines with four terabytes of RAM, for example. This is where the machine learning and the massive compute power from cloud servers are critical. Once all the responses are computed and run through machine learning models, output is produced and cycled back through the training engine and immediately everyone is fished again, but better this time. This process is painfully effective. We could do all this manually, but we would be very slow and mostly ineffective. This is one of the main reasons that phishing attacks today are so effective and are getting so much better so fast. This is also why it's important to make sure if you're trying to defend against this, you're using something that can match the horsepower and the intelligence of these machine learning engines. It's also important that you really make sure you're using a fish testing solution that's capable of mimicking this behavior.